And there is no end of the manipulation. That's clear and obvious after today's gold and silver slam. I mean, it wasn't a big slam because they weren't set up for a big one on the, you know, the futures and options and all that. It's going to be a little one, but <clears throat> it's still a slam. It's still, you know, throwing thousands of contracts on the comics at gold and silver at the exact same time and forcing the price lower on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that is the MO of the market rigging. That controls the U.S. dollar, controls the price of oil, control, controls the price of everything. So as of today, there is no change in the Trump financial uh, market rigging versus the, the Obama rigging versus the Bush rigging versus any rigging going back to the you know, early 70s. You know, my take has always been, well, you know, he had to appoint some of these guys just to, you know, make it into office. So now he's in office and he's got to get some key people in place. And, you know, you notice the first guys in place were the generals. Uh huh. So in case there is some kind of attempted coup by the retarded left, um, the, the generals will be in place and have the power to, to, you know, overthrow anybody who's trying to overthrow Trump. <laughs> Trump can't do a thing to change things unless he, he destroys the old system and, and implements a new system. And because everybody, all the bad guys have all the money now, you know, that's been the way it's, <laughs> way it's been put together. So, right. you know, we need to change the concept that, that Trump can oh, turn things around and get us going on a, on a, a solid footing is a, is a fallacy. It's, it's a, it's a fake concept because the, the scales are already weighted in one direction. I'm talking about the current holdings of all the wealth of humanity. Mm -hmm. It's concentrated into just a few hands. And unless you destroy that wealth, they will have the power behind the scenes. Yeah, they can wait out a, a Trump presidency and see if they can get someone in in four years that you know is, is kind of on their side. But remember, it's, it's about wealth allocation. And, and the allocation has turned to a, a you know, 0.11, 0 0.0001% of the population owns 99% of the wealth. Yeah. And right. the rest is just us, you know, fighting for scraps. So unless there something happens to redistribute that wealth by either, you know, taking it away from the rich and giving it to the poor, which I don't think is the right thing to do, or destroying the electronic fictitious wealth in the first place so that the the fake wealth, the the promises, the credits, the blips is washed away. And and that's what because they that's what they believe, they meaning that point oh oh one percent believe is wealth now. And they think that if they have the legal claim of debt that is owed to them, they are the richest people in the world. And yeah. the, and all these, all these electronic blips that we call money or stocks and bonds and all that stuff is, that's all it is, is a, it's a credit instrument. And as long as people believe that, you know, under U.S. law, they can, you know, call in these debts at any moment, which the banks can under U.S. law, they can, call in all loans at any moment if they want. Yeah. It would obviously wreak havoc. And then you, it comes down to the court. Will the court uphold the, the law that was written by the bad guys and is exercised by the bad guys when it all falls apart? Because it, it's these ultra wealthy people that will claim to have uh, the legal power and legal ownership over all monetary assets. We can delegitimize electronic assets, electronic debt assets, by allowing the system to trade freely, which would destroy the derivative market, which would destroy every bank. And all these assets, even government assets, are held in banks. The banks might try to implement a blockchain technology to, to maintain and hold 
their current assets. Yeah. They can say, oh, yeah, we've been cheating for these past 100 years, but now we're going to introduce truth and honesty into the system. Now that we have all the assets, we're going to introduce truth and honesty into the system and adapt the blockchain technology to manage the current system. See, see what's going to happen there is they're going to say, either they're going to crash and say, oh, it's the blockchain's fault because the system crashed, you know, whether or not it's because of truth and honesty. But more often than not, they're going to say, you know, this, this is a truth machine. You can't, you can't, uh, you know, this is, this is what it is. And yes, when it was implemented, we had all the assets, but since then we still have all the assets because look at the blockchain. So there's problems there. There's problems with Bitcoin exchanges because they only exchange derivatives and they don't exchange real Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, there's problem with online wallets because they are, they're doing the same thing that Mountain Gox did in that they are not going out and buying Bitcoin when people, you know, they only go get the Bitcoin when people start redeeming their, their accounts on the online wallets. Sure. I mean, there's a pool of Bitcoin and a pool of cash in each one of these exchanges and each one of these wallets. And, but, but the amount of trades that go on, yeah. it, it's not, these aren't, yeah, it's not allocated. Well, it's, it's fractional reserve. Yeah. Type, just like stock market, just like how banking works. Right. The, in the, in the Chinese exchanges, they'll put in, you know, say a hundred thousand, Bitcoin into an exchange and then trade a million Bitcoin a day. Well, what's wrong with that picture? <laughs> they don't have the Bitcoin if everybody were to redeem at the same time. Yeah. And absolutely. they don't have the cash if everybody, but they make money on, on basically the way the Chinese exchanges were making money was because they don't charge fees for trading. That's why the volumes are so high. They made money on, lending out margin for this stuff and they would get paid for the margin they lent out. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a mess, but, but there is the only, the only solution goes back to kind of the, what, what I call the original good guys are saying. They, they don't believe in what Trump's doing um, for the good guys. And it's only a faction of the good guys who are, Looking at Trump saying, Oh yeah, okay, th this will work. We can, we can smooth out the transition to a real system. Um, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to pull that band aid and that band aid destroys the wealth of the 0.0001% that hold the majority of their wealth in a lock electronic IOUs known as money, known as derivatives, known as mortgage backed securities, all that stuff. And yeah. You're gonna you're gonna wipe away the rest of us with it, but the problem in the world today is not is not the amount of wealth people have. The mm -hmm. problem is the amount of debt people have, <clears throat> credit, right. and it's in the hands. And the the you got your your debtors, and then you got your collectors that are the point oh oh one percent. So if you wipe out the electronic assets, you're also wiping out all the debt in the world. Yeah. And that's kind of the, if Trump's a good guy, he won't cause it to happen. All, all you have to do to make this happen is stop rigging the markets and okay. let markets trade freely. And then instantly gold and silver and Bitcoin will skyrocket. I don't know what the Dow is going to do. It could go down 75%. It could go up 100%, 200%, 10,000% in the next yeah. year if right. the Fed opens the spigots. But you know, who's going to believe it? Who's going to, what will the banks be doing if, if that kind of distortion happens in the market when their derivatives, they've hedged everything in their that known demand and you need every counterparty to stay in business for the bank hedges to work. That's why China bailed out Deutsche Bank of their derivative implosion is because they didn't want the system to crash. And that's probably why Trump is all pissed off at China. He does want the system to crash. We do need the system to crash. The longer he waits, the deeper he gets into his, his you know, change. He's going to destroy whatever he sets up as far as economic change that he's making.
because, you know, how far along, unless he wants to continue market rigging through his whole term. And if he does that, I got a problem with that. That doesn't make America great. That destroys America. No matter what the the rich get and the the people and where the stock market goes and all that. Right. So I do believe within the next couple of months, we we are going to have the mother of all crashes. And I do believe there's a plan how to restart things. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of that, you know, a lot of the Trump's kind of even forcing it with all his talk of tariffs and all that. If you go back to like the 1930s, when they were trying to, you know, what are we going to do to save America after the stock market crash? They passed the Smoot Hawley Act, which was put tariffs on like 20,000 items that were coming into the country. And all it did was prolong the, the despair. You, you, the unemployment went from 8% to 25% in 1933. And the system fell apart because when you throw tariffs on, on countries, they throw tariffs on you. Right. And, and then, you know, what happens is that uh, imports and exports get cut. In, in the 30s, because of the Smoot-Hawley Act, the imports and exports both were cut by 50%. So right. that doesn't sound like real strong economic growth that Trump wants. Now, I have a theory that you know, when we crash the system, no one's going to trust the U.S. dollar, obviously, and, and no one's going to tr- trust the U.S. much at all as far as trading. So it is a good idea to, to get these con- uh, companies to come back into America because we're going to have to rebuild our manufacturing base for the sole purpose that nobody will trade with us. How can How can Trump ever go back to the real numbers as far as inflation yeah. Or as far as unemployment and all that, when they've been rigged for so long and and are so distorted, I mean, how do you go back? There's only one way to do this, and it's to crash the system. All, all you got to do in the basement of the treasury is click, I want $100,000 Dow, keep buying it until it hits $100,000, click the mouse, bang, the computer runs off and, and buys everything until it hits $100,000 and then it stops. And then at $100,000, Level it out so that every time it goes under, you buy, and every time it goes over, you sell. Yeah. It's so easy to do when you have a computer and you don't have a a regulatory agency that is going to stop you sure. from doing anything like that. And and usually the Fed and the people within the Fed, like Stanley Fisher, will tip off the Mossad and and you know the, the Israeli financial rigors and about what's coming. Uh, I think he needs to be routed out. The uh, you know, Stanley Fisher, the number two guy at the Fed. Yeah, he was the head of the Israeli Central Bank. What's he doing as number two person at the U.S. Central Bank? Yeah, he has he has dual citizenship, like Rahm Emanuel and all those guys. What yeah. are these people doing there? They're, they're buying all the U.S. debt now. The Fed and I mean the the insanity of what goes on behind the scenes. And then and then there's something that I've talked about for a long time. It's like you know, if, if they're lying about unemployment and they're lying about the rate of inflation and they're lying about GDP and they're lying about, you know, all these economic metrics, why aren't they lying about the amount of money that is created? Mm-hmm. How easy is it for the U.S. government to secretly create trillions of dollars without telling anybody? Or any government. Yep. If they catch wind, yeah, the U.S. will take out that country and destroy their currency using the derivative markets, which they've done to uh, Venezuela and Zimbabwe and stuff like that. It's not just the U.S. government. But, yeah, of course, Venezuela was pissing off the U.S. Where is Venezuela now? Their, their economy is destroyed because we destroyed it. All we have to do is click the mouse a couple times and you know sell the boulevard. And all of a sudden, the government's broke, and they got to go or or drive the price of oil down. CNN, I watch for pure entertainment and to know what the the bad guys are trying to do. Yeah. They're, I, I'm surprised that Trump still allows them to go to the uh, press conferences because now they they raise their hand. Well, 
Trump said the uh, the voting there's a problem with the voting. The people who voted, you know, a lot of illegals are voting. So does he think the the election is illegitimate? I'm like, Jesus Christ, give it up already. Trump was right. Yes, a lot of people voted that weren't allowed to vote. That's how right. Clinton won by 10 million votes. And, you know, Trump didn't uh, campaign in California or New York because he knew that those states were lost in the uh, – you know, right. the electoral and, and, college. So why would he? He wasn't right. trying to win the the popular vote. He was trying to win the, the election. Exactly. If, he, if it was a popular vote, he would